from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, welcome to this edition of the Cube Insights, powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we're going to look uh, at IBM's systems business and specifically the IBM System Z and talk about the impact that it's going to have on IBM financials. Now, Alex, if you would kindly bring up the first slide. So this is data from ETR's spending intention survey for the second half of 2019. They asked customers, compared to the first half of 2019, what are your spending intentions on the second half of 2019, specifically for IBM? So you can see the N here is 448 customers out of their panel of 4,500 of which around uh, 11 or 1,200 answered this question, specifically cited that they were IBM customers. What this data shows is 21% of the customers said we're going to increase spend in the second half relative to the first half with IBM. 52% said we're going to stay flat. 14% said they're going to decrease. You see 6% said we're going to basically leave the IBM platform and 7% said we're going to bring on IBM as new, we're a new customer. So if you take the people that are spending more and new and subtract out the leaving and the spending less, you get a net score, and you get a net score of 8%. Now we've been sharing with you this ETR data over the last several weeks and months. 8% is not great. IBM, according to ETR spending uh, surveys, are losing share relative to the overall market. You know, we've, we've covered this pretty extensively. Uh, we covered the Red Hat uh, acquisition and talked about how that, I mean, IBM intends to supercharge its, its cloud business, you know, specifically with Red Hat. I've, I've said, I've been on record saying, this is largely a services play where they're going to basically take Red Hat app, as an application development platform and help their customers modernize uh, their systems from um, using their large services footprint uh, to do that. But so, and I want to talk for a moment about the IBM business overall. IBM is all about mission critical work. The IBM Z, uh, their high-end systems, their related database, it's all about mission critical work. IBM shared some data uh, with analysts recently where they talked about, if you, if you look at IBM Z, IBM security business, its database, you know, particularly DB2, its middleware, its application management uh, services, uh, and its infrastructure, and all that sort of consulting work that goes around that, add that up, it, 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 it accounts for 60% of IBM's revenue. So this is why I, I want to spend some time talking about IBM Z. I mean, it's a kind of a boring but important topic. It used to be the heart of IBM's business. It used to drive you know, entirely their, their income statement. Uh, but in fact, today it's still very critical. All those pieces that I mentioned account for 60% of that business. So, Z is critical for driving IBM's systems business, and that gives air cover for IBM's business overall. So Alex, if you bring up the next slide, what, I, what I've done is just pulled out some quarterly data of IBM's systems revenue overall, and then juxtapose it against IBM's Z revenue. This is growth, this is just percent growth. So the blue is IBM Z, percent revenue growth relative to the previous year. This is in constant currency, by the way. Uh, and as well, it excludes the elimination of IBM's uh, Systems X business, the Intel-based business, so it's normalized for that. Um, and then the orange is the overall systems growth. So you can see that the blue grows virtually immediately after IBM announces a new system. So for instance, in January of 2013, IBM announced the Z13. We were there with theCUBE to cover it. Uh, we talked to a number of practitioners. What big banks and big mainframe customers do, and by the way, 25 of the world's top 25 banks run on Z. Huge proportion of re uh, retail giants run on Z. Why? Because it is the system of record. Um, and the, the, the top system of record, um, along with Oracle in the world, I'll talk more about that, but you can see here, Z13, so we talked to a lot of pra practitioners at the January uh, uh, launch, and they told me they buy this thing sight unseen because they know it's going to drive revenue for them. If they can get 
more power, more performance, lower cost, it drops right to their bottom line. So you can see 2016, even though there was a kicker in there of the, of the you know, next generation, not next generation, but a kicker to the Z, I didn't show it here, but bad year in 2016 in terms of growth. And you can see the blue is proportional to the orange. It drags it down in a, in, in a year. Z14 is announced. And you can see when the Z14 was announced in July of 2017, just right after that, boom, big uptick in Z revenue and proportional systems revenue. So you're on this sort of two year cycle of Z announcements and you can see 2019 in the first half has not been great. IBM just announced the Z15 in September. So we fully expect that in Q4, you're going to see that uptick. So I wanted to share that uh, with you. Next slide, I just want to make a couple of points about IBM Systems business. It's about an $8 billion business overall in terms of annual revenue. It comprises Z, power, and storage. So as they say, System Z drags a lot of software. It drags a storage, it drags services. It's about a 53% gross margin business. Uh, the storage business is actually, I think, a quite a good gross margin business. I think probably you know, higher than power. The server business is not you know, the greatest gross margin. I think mainframe is, is, is still pretty good. Um, IBM and Oracle dominate the business for systems of record. Oracle with Exadata and IBM with, with Z. Now you might say, hey, Exadata is, is growing. And Z, you know, it's, it's I just showed you the sort of fluctuation, but overall it's sort of you know, flattish. Maybe it can eke out you know, growth and, it actually can show good growth in one year, but if you normalize it over a couple of years, it's pretty much a flat business you know, or declining business. So you might say, well, Oracle X is growing, but that's because Oracle is replacing its entire hardware business and much of its you know, related software business with Exadata, all that wood behind one arrow, whereas you know, IBM um, has a more diversified portfolio. And so that's kind of apples to oranges comparisons. Now the ETR data shows that the storage inten intentions for the second half of 2019 really flipped to positive territory. Servers were still negative, but improving. And so as I showed you in the previous slide, I definitely would expect the systems business to have an uptick in Q4, um, and, and it's dragging storage with it. IBM synchronized uh, the, the storage announcement, the DS8000, but I'm not great with model numbers, but the recent storage announcement with the mainframe announcement, I'll make some more comments about that. But you seem, it seems that IBM's trying to do a better job of synchronizing that. IBM is also going to smooth out um, its, its, its systems revenue, I, I believe. I mean, it's right now it's very cyclical, uh, but I'll make some comments about that in, in a moment. So, IBM System Z and Exadata are unique in that their I.O. is tightly integrated. These are purpose-built systems, um, and, and the storage is in the I.O. are purpose-built for the systems of record. So they're very, very low latency. Give you an example, Oracle Exadata, recent announcements at Oracle Open World, I think 18 microseconds latency. IBM with its recent Z announcement I think is even lower. I want to say 15 microseconds, but don't hold me to that. Whereas if you compare that to traditional systems, you're talking about maybe 200 microseconds. In other words, those systems that aren't purpose-built for systems of record with integrated I.O. The I.O. is hardwired with custom silicon and ASICs, and so it's ultra, ultra fast I.O., which means you can push 10 times the I.O. through the system. So very, very high uh, 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 performance relative to what you saw in you know, kind of previous generations. Why do I spend so much time talking about this? Because this is a harbinger for future systems developments. Talking, you know, within two to three years, you're going to see the mainstream systems with this type of, of low latency. So you know, you might also say, well, that means that the IBM and the Exa data business are in big trouble. No, these, are, these systems are not going to be replaced. They're not going to be migrated. It's too risky, it's too expensive. We've talked about a, that a lot on theCUBE where it just doesn't make business sense for people to convert off the Z mainframe. There's too much custom code. They'd have to freeze that code for many, many months, maybe even longer. They'd risk their business. They can make much more money purchasing the next generation of system as long as the Z mainframe continues to add function, which it's doing. Same thing with Oracle Exadata. Years ago, IBM you know, announced support for Linux. Obviously, you know, Red Hat is uh, you know, now another key piece of that. They just, the recent Z15 announcement, encryption everywhere. 
Uh, they announced uh, you know, a hybrid cloud, so basically bringing the Z to cloud, uh, a really strong security focus. Uh, this, this cloud piece is interesting. You know, we talked a lot about cloud 2.0. Bringing the Z in the, to this, in the systems of record to cloud is something that IBM has said that it intends specifically to do. That will begin to potentially smooth out IBM's Z revenue. You know, it's ironic. Uh, in, the, in the late, latter part of the 1980s, kind of a financial game that IBM was playing, they converted their rental base, which was a monthly income stream, to purchase. When they did that, it created the effect of showing up on the income statement and kind of hiding the trouble that IBM was really in. When that transition ended, IBM really tanked, and that's when IBM got into big trouble, the whole downsizing trend. Gerstner came in, they bought PwC and really transformed the company. But the Z as the system of record, or the you know, old, old 3090, has, has, has lived on. Now we're seeing that dynamic come full circle where over time, IBM can shift from a from a, uh, an upfront pay to a subscription, which is, as I say, coming full circle. And it's going to be interesting to see how that transition works. Um, the other point, again, storage seems to be synchronizing its product cycles with Z, at least at the high end. And so this is likely to carry through to Q4. We see from the ETR spending data that storage intentions are up. Uh, I think the net score was, was, was up 5% versus a negative from the previous quarter. Uh, servers overall were still down. They don't have a question specific to Z, uh, but I would expect, fully expect that, that Q4 of this year, you're going to see a nice uptick uh, in Z revenue. And as I pointed out before with that 60% number, this is going to provide another halo effect for IBM's overall business. Will it be enough to propel the stock? You know, probably not. This stuff is factored in. The, 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 the analysts understand these product cycles. But it's something that, that I wanted to shine a light on because again, it's, it's one of these sort of important topics that not a lot of people talk about. People kind of roll your eyes when you talk about the mainframe, but the mainframe is here, it's alive and well. Uh, and you know, what I call mainframe, Oracle Alexa Data and IBM Z are really sort of you know, the two companies that are prominent in that space. And you know, while they might compete, to my earlier point, you're really talking about each company having its own install base, and as long as they keep investing in R&D and keep those product cycles coming, I would expect that this business is going to be healthy, yet cyclical, cyclical for a long, long time. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE Insights, powered by ETR. We'll see you next time, thanks for watching.